I'm uh, about to read this book. Um, it's a book that I've read before, but books are to me like movies in that it's best to sort of go back to them over the decades, I guess. Uh, because, again, like movies, I find that books tend to mean different things at different periods in your life because you're not really the same person, fundamentally at least, as you were, say, a decade ago when you first read or encountered uh, an idea or a movie or something. Um, one of the big impressions that uh, the myth, myth of Sisyphus made on me, uh, it's the story of... Um, it's the idea of whether or not suicide makes sense as a reaction to the absurdity absurdity of the world, of life, the universe, and everything. Does suicide make sense? It's not a question of does suicide per se make sense. In other words, there are circumstances, I certainly believe, under which sur uh, suicide makes perfect sense, like being in terminal agony or whatever. Um, but <clears throat> he's just uh, Camus was just sort of saying, does suicide make sense based on um, the absurdity of human existence? Um, it's an interesting sort of dilemma when we look around and we sort of see the universe that we're thrust into, more or less, uh, without being asked. Um, what, and we understand where, where we start to grasp its fundamental nature, does it make sense to continue to exist in it? Um... I won't blow the plot by saying what Camus thought, but um, I always found that that question is more or less the same question that's asked or posed, I guess, in the Bhagavad Gita when Krishna explains to Arjuna, the everyman, uh, that it actually does make sense to act in a world that doesn't make sense. Arjuna finds himself at the very beginning, uh, uh, the battle of Kurukshetra, the ultimate battle, um, on the wrong side, fighting the wrong people, he doesn't want to be involved in this war. It's just, there's, it, it's the stupidest war he could possibly imagine, and he just wishes the whole thing would just go away, and Krishna says, no, 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 no it doesn't work like that, Arjuna. <laughs> uh, this world that you're in, it, it's it's not clear that, he, that Krishna ever tells him that the world doesn't make sense, but he does say the world is never what it seems. Um, it, uh, it never makes sense in the way that you expect it to make sense. But you should still go with it. Um, and it's a, it's an interesting parallel to the myth of Sisyphus, where Sisyphus is condemned to eternally roll the stone up to the top of the hill and have it pushed back down, then he has to go down and get it and push it back up again. What's Sisyphus to make of this? Eternally he has to do this. This is crazy. Um, but Camus, of course, shows that uh, there is another way to look at this. And I tend to agree. I won't say that that, um, that we can argue that the world is a good place or that we should be, if we look at things for the way that they actually are, that, that we should be happy. I don't, I don't think that that actually follows from my type of reasoning. Some people will look at reality and see it accurately and despair as a result, um, which is kind of what the Gita says. It says, you might look at this universe, at this world, at human, the human condition, and sort of despair. Um, that kind of is understandable. Look at the, look at the world. Who wouldn't despair? Um, but... There's another way to look at it. Um, and the last line of the Gita, of course, says, having reflected fully, do as you will. Um, you have the... The universe is what it is. You have the option of coping with it or despairing of it. You have the, op or the option of succumbing to it or overcoming it. Um, either way, the universe is going to be what it is, and any succumbing or any overcoming is going to be here. You're not going to, um, you know, if you succumb to the universe, it's just you succumbing to it, because again, the universe just is what it is. 
um, your insignificance is ultimate, is absolute. You might succumb to the universe, but the universe will just keep going on. It's merry way or unmerry way or whatever. Um, in the case of Sisyphus, it's kind of like, I don't know, it seems as though he is the universe. It does The, the, the story only seems to involve him and the gods. Um, he seems to be the universal condition, whereas in the Gita, um, Arjuna is sort of the one human being compared against the vastness of the cosmos, and the vastness of the cosmos compared to the vastness of the inner cosmos, and which one actually is the one that decides. And again, Krishna in, our, in the Gita says you can't really ignore either one. If you ignore the outer, it's going to come and bite you in the nethers. Just try and ignore this gigantic battle and watch what happens. Go ahead and despair. Just say, I don't want to deal with this. Watch what happens. <laughs> uh, you're not going to get very far. Um, by the same token, get caught up in it all. Believe in all of this. Swallow this as fundamentally real and fundamentally uh, logical or rational or that, you know, try and wrap your head around reality and sort of try and make sense out of it all. Good luck. You're not going to do it. Um, in other words, you can't really live out of the game. You can't just leave. Uh, but you can't join the game and believe that the game is real. It's there's some sort of syncretism that has to take place between the two. You have to grasp that the game is real, but only up to a point, and you have to grasp that what's going on in here is real, but only up to a point. You have to understand that there's some sort of, I wouldn't even say balance that has to be struck between the two. It's more a case of you have to integrate the two. Uh, you have to make them both work. Not an easy thing to do, but it is possible. It's just the same way as it's not easy to despair absolutely. Because, um, okay, so you despair absolutely. Now what? <laughs> you know, uh, Arjuna drops his bow down, sits down in the chariot, and says, I can't handle this. Okay, the battle's going to happen anyway, whether you can handle it or not. Um, and it's the same thing as uh, Sisyphus. He doesn't have the option of not uh, pushing that boulder up the hill again. So he, again, he decides he's going to be in the game, but not of the game, or at least my understanding of Camus says that. Um, it's an interesting idea, I think, that's, that's I don't think, uh, I think that most cultures are most existential thinkers, most philosophically or cosmologically or philosophically minded people have grappled with this. What do we do with the fact that A, the universe doesn't make sense, and B, it's not going away. <laughs> like, what do we do? Uh, uh, and C, whether we like it or not, there's people that seem to be able to cope with it all and deal with it and not despair. What do we do about that? How do we go from somebody who is caught up in and confused and uh, boggled by the universe, um, and how do we switch from being that to being someone who can, oh, all right, I see how I can actually manage all of this. Um because that state does seem to exist. I think that anyone who's actually... I think you can only really feel despair at a point where you've never felt non-despair because you don't grasp that you're in a place that you don't want to be or shouldn't be when you when this is all that you understand is this state of despair. Uh, you have to somehow um, cope with the, with the world that exists. Um... And at the same time, you have to cope with uh, the fact that you've got a mind and a will that wants something better than that. And uh, that's what uh, this story does. I don't think that it reaches quite the same conclusions as other books of the same nature. Again, the Gita is one, but there's all kinds of them. There's the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible. There's uh, oh any number of just philosophical or psychological um, uh, thought experiments that uh, pose the same question and some of them answer the, that question, some of them don't um, but it is uh, 
one of the questions, how do we face all of this? And how do we, I don't know, I don't know any other way to put it, but how do we keep on the sunny side of the street? Um, which, no matter how much we try and tell ourselves doesn't exist, still quite obviously does. Are happy people stupid? We have to, <laughs> you know, we can either blot out the obvious fact that some people can cope with all this by saying that they're deficient, or we can say, maybe I would like to be on that side of things. Um, and even that, that's a, an improper metaphor because, again, that implies that there's two sides of the street and that you're just sort of running from the dark side to stay on the bright side, etc., etc. At, at a certain point, metaphors fail, too. Um, I've already harped on the fact that language fails, but uh, <laughs> whether we like it or not, metaphors start to fail after a while. Uh, metaphors are um, based on language, I suppose. So, um, Which is why, I guess, it's oftentimes to get your point across, you have to repeat it a thousand times, or to grasp what somebody else is trying to tell you, you have to listen to it phrased a hundred different ways. Um, it's an interesting idea, though, this business of coping with uh, our condition, um, finding value in it. Um, I think that, si that Sisyphus, Camus and Sisyphus, was specifically dealing with the idea of suicide, whereas the Gita was dealing with the idea of despair versus its opposite. Um, but the questions, I think, are fundamentally similar. What do we do about this? <laughs> Another ramble.